Well, it seems that responsibility has finally caught up with me. I have this numerical problem. I have this house, but I want to get a different house where it's more private, somewhere in the woods with property and noise that doesn't come from, for example, a neighbor's air conditioner. So now begins the task of repairing this house and getting it ready to sell. But I don't really want to sell it. I think I want to keep it. And thus springs forth my numerical problem. I think I want to keep this house and rent it and still get my house in the woods. Well, the numerical problem comes from the fact that although the mortgage is paid, because of well, welcome to America. <laughs> I still have to pay off that big brain of mine. <laughs> well, anyways, today I started with this grill, and it's a very nice grill. I have these pieces of granite for the sides, and I'm replacing the burner and propping up this thing and leveling it, and it's a very nice grill, and it runs on natural gas. You can see that there's a line. It's hard-wired into the house, so I don't have to mess with fuel or anything like that. Well, I'm cleaning back here and cleaning off the siding, and this is today's problem that I'm working on, and I'll tell you a little bit about it. It's kind of interesting. Uh, you're probably wondering what that thing is, and it that's also kind of interesting, and so is this. I'll come back to those things. For now, I'm looking at the little white strip that runs along the bottom of the house. I dug uh, probably about a, f about a foot and a half down when I first moved in here, which was, I don't know, eight years ago, and I parged it. I clean. It was just clean block, bare block, and I parged it with a cement that's about half of an inch thick. I even beautified these windows. Well, it would be beautiful if I kept it clean. And I was a little sloppy with the paint and the grout work. But you know how home ownership is. It's just a lot of work. But, nevertheless, Aside from those unsightly marks that I left with the lawnmower, the parge turned out to be quite attractive and quite durable. The only place that it actually became a problem is the focus of today's project. My normal projects on my normal channel, if you want to call it normal, usually require quite a bit of my effort. And for that reason, because I'm going to have to start remodeling this house, there, I will probably suffer a lot of reduced content in the near future. This is just more important, and even though I've grown to really like doing the whole YouTube thing, I just have to face the fact that I'm not sure that it's worth it. <laughs> Sorry guys. Anyhow, let's take a look at this parge. Uh, I'll set up the tripod. I'll set up the tripod. Hold on a second. See, the filming process requires a great deal of time and attention. <sighs> because you need to adjust the lighting and the focus. See how it has a strange coloration in here now? It's kind of yellow. That's because outside is very much more blue. And there's a whole bunch of things involved with videography, and that's really not the focus here. Well, you know what? I don't really have a focus here. This is for the grill. These are parts that I'm redoing for the grill. Give them a mix of various paints to get that look, and I'm very pleased with it. Uh, stool. Oh, you want to see this? I'll show you a close-up some other time, though. This is what I came for. These are little cast blocks that I made from PVC pipe. 
and I made them out of a mixture of materials using well that's the focus of today's subject so I will talk about this and I should really talk about the mold itself seeing as how I have quite a bit of expertise in the field of mold making but that's not the subject for today either so let's return and sorry for all the distractive side talking so did you figure out yet why it's split off here and not there any ideas I bet you figured it out the freeze thaw of the Pennsylvania winter allows water to get you know under there and then it expands when it freezes and it lifts it heaves and that heaving process broke this off so what I need to do is I'm going to use a grinder to make a cut there only to the steps only to there and where I don't have to do it I'll replace the parge and just use a spacer this time something like I don't know about three-eighths of an inch I'll keep my parge three-eighths of an inch off of the concrete and then I will fill that with a caulking. It's pretty impressive. I'm just going to remove this section right here, just because there's a crack in it. In case you're wondering, that's poison ivy. Yes, I'm allergic to it. Don't worry, it's not contagious. Um, it's just one of the things about Pennsylvania. We have lots of railroad tracks and poison ivy. Well, I would like this to dry off, and before we go inside, I'll tell you a little bit about those two things I mentioned before. This splitter here is to these two hoses. This little green one has a quick connect fitting on it, and it goes into this. Yes, I made the lid. It's exposed aggregate. For a retarder, I used um, Coca-Cola. Believe it or not, you can slow the, the superficial curing of the concrete by just misting on Coca-Cola. And what that allows you to do is as... Okay, think about the word retard. Ha ha ha, yeah, I know, retard. Um, it retards the top layer of the, of the concrete from hardening. And so the bottom gets hard and the top can be sprayed off with a hose and it reveals this um, aggregate. It exposes the aggregate. So yes, this was a cast part. I made the form. I make lots of forms. I never really talk about that in my videos much, but I've made many, many forms. Many, many cast products. Uh, that bench there. Yeah, I made that. I made the molds. I cast the parts. Um, what, yeah, see those little that little flower pot there. Uh, there's a cast part. This is a beautiful rock I found on a bike ride, but I cast this part. I even put some stained glass and tile work in there. What else? Those are cast. Uh, this is a thing called Hyper Tufa. Weird product. Okay, I'm getting way off track, and I don't want to upload another 40 minute video. Lots to get to, lots to get to. <laughs> Can you tell I just drank like three cups of coffee? Okay, in here. There's a water line. 
the quick connect hose can come off and disconnect and go in the shed for the winter and the bucket has all sorts of pea gravel underneath and you won't be able to tell but there's an up well you'll be able to tell there's an upward grade all the way up to the greenhouse I ran a house water line that goes all the way up there and then check out in one of the videos the greenhouse videos you'll notice the hose bib there in the middle and that's so that we can have city water we want to have city water up there for for drinking um, because we water with rainwater, but we use it for drinking and for the misters because we want clean water so, so that it doesn't clog. The beauty of this bucket is there's a whole bunch of pea gravel underneath there. So in order to winterize this, the grade is convenient. I just unscrew that and open the, the valve at the top and the water just naturally flows out and relieves the hose or the water line of any um, residual water. It siphons itself dry, which is very important because it gets cold in Pennsylvania. And yeah, I know it's however deep a bucket is, but we get some cold winters. Okay, next topic. I'm going to make a jump just so the video file isn't. I can't stand jump cuts. It just as a, I think it's a repulsive, it's just a repulsive editing format. I can't stand it. If you need to make jump cuts, then you need to work on your public speaking. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, this is an active radon system. And do I have to have it? No. In this area, radon is a concern. Do I have to have it personally? No, my house isn't. It hasn't tested very high for radon. But radon is not a myth, and I, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. Well, you're thinking KSS, though. Well, this is a radon system and it's a vacuum <laughs> but you're thinking no radon is nonsense I remember my chemistry and radon's all the way over on the far right of the periodic tape okay I did not make that jump cut intentionally I swear look it overheated piece of crap its internal temperature is too high it has something to do with the fact that it's like 94 out here and I'm starting to become delirious Okay, what was I saying? The periodic table, that's right, at the far right of the periodic table, you remember that radon is an inert gas. So it doesn't really react with anything, right? So isn't that just a bunch of propaganda or hogwash or some Obama care conspiracy to try to take your freedoms and guns? No, that is not the case. Radon is a real thing, and it actually is something like, I think it's the second leading cause of lung cancer, uh, smoking being the obvious winner in that department. Okay, where do we go now? Uh, I can show you the, the how the radon system works. It, it's just a fan and the fan plugs into the uh, under of the concrete. So, oh, oh, but why is radon dangerous? Um, because you inhale it. It gets into your lungs and then even though it's inert, it's radioactive. So, it degrades into Look at that, I'm sweating. It degrades into other um, harmful elements inside of your lungs. And, well, you can look up, look it up yourself. Okay, back to our project. I'm starting to become strangely comfortable with talking to myself, making all of these videos. Which is another reason why I want to move into the woods. Because I can only imagine what the neighbors think about me talking to myself all the time. <sighs> Anyhow... I'm going to go unload this footage in the air conditioning and cool off. And I will come back and talk about this mix. And I have a good excuse. It's not because I'm hot. It's because I want the back patio to dry off. <laughs> I'll be back in a minute. Oh my goodness, it is honestly heart-stoppingly cold in here. But real quick, I just want to show you this is the radon thingy in the bob. Now watch what happens when I turn the fan on. I run it for two weeks at a time. I'll run it for two weeks and turn it off for two weeks. It doesn't have to be on all the time. Not when I have such questionable um, radon amounts in my house. But this is measuring vacuum pressure. Imagine that a fan is running, lowering the pressure inside of the tube, and that lowered pressure 
is revealed by this little um, straw that goes into it. And the pipe goes all the way up and through the roof, ex exhausting these questionable radioactive isotope gases. I'll see you in a minute. Well, look at that. The patio is almost dry. No, I wasn't in there playing on the internet, arguing with commenters for the last hour and a half. I did do some work here. And take a look at the tip of the blade that I'm using, this diamond impregnated thing. It goes through it like butter. It only took me about five minutes to get all the way to here. From there to there is done, and I'll take footage of the remainder of the way. It's pretty simple. I Let's see if you can see that. I get it in there until it's about at the depth of the tip or the the diamond part of the bit or blade, and that's about the average thickness that I used when I was applying the parge. So even if it's not the whole way through the parge, it will reduce the strength of the parge enough that it will split there rather than. Uh, split elsewhere or disconnect or heave the parge away. So if I fill that uh, with some flexible type of material to take up the space, then this problem should be solved. As for this problem, hello, this is a horse of a different color. Uh, for now, I just kind of knocked off the high spots just so that it's not a toe stubber. But this is going to need to be dressed, and I may have to. I'm not even going to. I'm not, not even going to address it. I'm not even going to talk about it. Way off subject. Okay, let's take some footage of this and get this over with. Well, I am very pleased with that. It went through it the same way you would expect a utility knife to go through a stick of butter that was sitting on the roof. It took me just minutes to make that groove. And it's perfectly sized for a nice, comfortable bead of caulking. Now that the patio is all wet again, I have a good excuse to go play on the internet for another hour. No, it's time to go mix up the stuff for here. Alrighty, boys and girls, I put it on auto focus, auto white balance, auto everything. So anything that goes wrong from the cam camera end, it's not my fault. It's the camera's fault. Let's get to it. First, you need one of these. This is the greatest thing ever. It's like a flexi bucket. Where do I get one of those? I'm glad you asked. Walmart. Walmart paint comes in these. Walmart paint is a wonderful brand of paint. They're not paying me to say that. It just is. If you chop the top ring off, then it becomes a nice, flexible, general purpose bucket that's just awesome for a million different things, and that's your tip for the day. But if you cut it even lower, so that it's just the right size to accommodate a margin trial, as it's got a margin trial, the flat as opposed to, wait for it, the pointing trial. When you hear, not trial like T-R-I-A-L, like you go to trial, I'm talking about a trial, excuse my Americanized uh, interpretation of trial. Anyhow, pointing, you might have heard, when they do brickwork, they repoint brick, they fill the mortar joints back up, they use a pointing trial, like this. But this is the go-to tool for me. This, once you, it, it's a little clumsy at first to get, to become accustomed to using it, but once you get used to using a margin trial, it's just a spectacular tool. So what are we using? Well, I mix, I mix it myself. This is, uh, I start with Type S Premix, just the big bags. I keep it in buckets up in the shed. 
and I mix it to to the purpose that I'm using it for. In most cases, I don't have to have a mix that's so incredibly strong, but in this case, I want it to just be hard as a rock, literally. This is, let's say, one part Type S premix, which is mostly sand with a little bit of Portland cement in it, and then I put additional Portland cement into it to make it even harder. And uh, because, well, you have to think about it from a business perspective. They use they fill the bag with mostly sand because it's cheaper than the Portland cement. So I buy an additional bag of Portland cement and then add it to it. So I start with premix, I add Portland cement to it, and then I also use this quick wall or some such product that's made for parge, and really what I use it for is the fiberglass that's in it. You can see these little strands of fiberglass, and that gives the, um, it really adds an aggregate that can really help connect the binder together. Those are your key. Those are your two words for the day: aggregate and binder. Any concrete, and let's we can call this a concrete. It's just a composite mixture of aggregates and binders. Binders being the glue, aggregates being the particles that make up the overall mixture. So this is fiberglass, Portland cement, and sand effectively. Welcome to the inside of my shed. And no, you can't have a look around, I'm sorry. But the reason why is because there's personal stuff everywhere and you would get a look around and you'd be able to trace me back to who I am and where I live. And why does that matter to me? Anonymity? It doesn't really. I'm really not even camera shy, surprisingly. I don't care. I mean, what are you going to do with my information? Nothing. The reason that it matters is because, well, because the premise behind my channel originally was instead of talking about my personality, we were supposed to talk about the ideas. And I just got caught up in that. And now I have to jealously cling to my secret identity. <laughs> it's just so bizarre. I don't know. I, I, I would like to hear your input, to be honest. I would like to hear your advice. Tell me what you think I ought to do. Should I just step out in front of the camera? I don't know. Things would change uh, in in a in a way. It would kind of be like selling out. I always figured when I actually show myself in front of the camera, then my channel has jumped the shark because it becomes more about me as a personality than the, the, the ideas contained within. I don't know. Let me know. Tell me about what you think. But there are things all through this shed that I could talk about. I've been making things for a very, very long time, and for that reason I just have stuff that I can talk about everywhere. But did you even notice that marble s sculpture right there? Probably not, huh? That's how far I got. It was supposed to be a weeper statue. It's a French Pleurant, it's called, but never mind. It's way off topic. Quick wall? I don't know. No, that's the wrong thing. I have to get type S. Okay, I'm cutting. Okay, sorry about that. There was a time where I had a bucket labeling system, and I actually kept to my system where I would label the tops and the sides, but it would appear that that day has come and gone. Well, what am I going to use? As I've already told you, and at the risk of being redundant, I'm using Quickcrete. 
type S, which is effectively filler. It's sand, and you can use this on its own, but it's very crumbly when it's done. And even bricklayers wouldn't mix uh, mortar this sandy. Well, if you're a bricklayer, let me know if you disagree. Now, here is the quick wall, which is your ready mix parging product with fiberglass in it. And this is lovely to use, but it's far too expensive. So we use these additional fillers to get what we want cheaply. Now look at this. This is the binder itself. This is type S. Or sorry, sorry. This is Portland cement. This is the stuff that puts it all together and makes it ridiculous hard. You can see it has little balls in it because it's old, and um, that probably will reduce its efficacy, but oh well, such is life. This will be good enough. I don't know what those parts I mixed were. I do it at this point largely by intuition. Sorry to use the I word if I don't know how well you know me. But you should know that I am not a proponent of intuition. I think that our intuition is, in general, very flawed. And whenever possible, we should seek to reduce how much leeway we give our intuition and replace that with what is testable or empirically verifiable. Okay, that's enough lecturing. On with the show. Don't worry about the moisture. It's actually a good thing. In fact, over the next couple days, I will be misting it to keep it moist as it cures. Now, if I were to guess, and I guess my guess is going to be forever cemented in the histories of the internet, so I'll make my guess count. I would say that this is more than enough mud. I'm not going to mix it all at once. But you can see that this is a wonderful mix. It becomes very fluid. Look at that. The little jump cuts that I'm putting in are only so that I can have smaller files to work with. The big long files that are like five minutes long are far too cumbersome for me to work with in editing. I can do it, it's just this way makes it easier. Okay, now remember that spiel about intuition? When you're mixing stuff like this, your intuition will always tell you to use more water. You want to reject that intuition. <laughs> In most cases, more water is a bad idea. It's very easy to add too much water. So, you shouldn't, all, you shouldn't put all your dry mix into your bucket at once. You should leave some on the, out, on the outside. In case you do add too much water, you always want to be able to add more dry mix just in case, just as a safety precaution. Look, I, I mixed it too wet. It's okay, that's okay. Mixing it too wet at first is okay for the reason that it's easier to mix when it's wet. take this rather tedious part in the video to 
thank you for being here and being interested in watching this. Uh, it means a lot to me that there are people who are interested enough to stick around even in some of these tedious or boring parts. It sends a signal to me that if people are really interested that I should be genuinely flattered. And there's a lot of angry puzzle nerds out there who watch my videos and account for the major part of my viewership who are disrespectful and mean and it really sucks that I'm doing this just as much for them as I am for you because believe me I wish it weren't that way alright that's enough drama I'm going to do some high speed of application and that should about do it for this video it's probably too long as it is Too much moisture. Well, isn't that embarrassing? Uh, you can't see my face, so I really don't have any pride to lose. Besides, one way or another I'll get it done, and I'm really getting annoyed with filming. <laughs> there we go. I switched you to a different tripod. A little guy because I really have to get my face right up against this some things in YouTube you have to cut us some slack they're very difficult to do sometimes because you have to position your face so far away from where you would normally have it while you're working and it's something you should keep in mind that I'm very much an actor which is so goofy. I'm pretending to be working most of the time, when in fact most of the work takes place at the computer chair, which is just awful. I'm really feeling the burn from that, because I don't like doing that. I don't like that aspect of this. I much, much prefer uh, actual physical work. <laughs> and I feel like I've grown soft from such a decrease in the amount of activity that I do over the last few years. Well, this part is, as you can tell, tedious. If you kind of get into the zone, uh, it starts to go good. At, at first, I don't, you know, it's been a long time, and I kind of look like I don't know what I'm doing, but It'll go. It'll be all right in the long run. Just have to get my pattern down. So as I was saying before the camera shut off, who knows how much footage I actually lost. It's the heat. The camera keeps shutting down because of the heat. What I was saying is how I actually enjoy this. I've always liked masonry stuff. It's soothing. Uh, there's not as much stress or pressure on you as you might think. It's just... I guess you could equate it to what it's like to draw a picture. Um, when I was younger, I was very much you know, more artistic. And people would tell me that I was a good artist, that I was good at drawing. and my secret was that you just keep revising. You just keep going. It looks terrible at first, but you just keep doing it. You keep adding little details. A little pencil stroke at a time eventually can result in a very nice looking portrait.
and I would encourage you to approach all of your problems that way, where often seems as though you're getting nowhere, but you just keep on it. It's tenacity. Don't become discouraged. And pretty soon you look back over what you've done. Even though it feels like you've gotten nowhere. And you realize you're almost half done. <laughs> well, I'll give you an update. I've been battling with it for a few minutes. Trying to keep it up. And it just wants to fall. And I'm not going to stay here all night doing that, so... I made some snow foam strips. And these can stay, and I can work it right against there. And I should be able to squish these, or scrape these out when it's all hard. With no problem whatsoever. I'm pretty proud of that solution. Let's see how it goes. Yes, I can definitely tell that that's going to be much simpler. Because it's kind of like building anything. You start with the foundation and then you work your way up. And gravity is always working away or working against you when you're using this sort of stuff. And I've got little hard crispies in here now. And that's the end of it. This is a very nice container because it's so easy to clean out with a margin trowel. I can't show you because I only have one hand. But that's how far my bucket full got me. So I'm on the home stretch. There she is. All done. Have a seat right there for a moment. It'll just take some light, loving caresses like this over the next hour or so. I'll let it tack up a bit and give it its final smoothing. And I appreciate you keeping me company. And I'm not really sure if that was a joke or not. <laughs> But I'm going to go get washed up while this tacks up. And I will talk to you some other time. See you guys.